I come from the airline group. I decided to bring up the old, one of the old airline logos just because in order to irritate people, I suppose. Um, this is the one that was when I was involved. Um, so I'm one of the open source people. Uh, this was the gang. Uh, you'll notice, you'll recognize several of them, I'm sure. That's uh, Yuki Grebener, uh, who ran Ed Eddy, and we did air open source once upon a time, a long, long time ago. I apologize for my 1990s clothes. Um, there you go. That's about a little over 20 years ago now. Whew. Okay, uh, and then we sold. We, then we, after that, we went and we sold Blue Tail. Blue Tail, uh, we sold to a company called Altion and sold it into, they sold themselves in turn to Nortel. Um, Blue Tail technology actually survived uh, in Nortel. As a matter of fact, a couple years ago, I was trying to sell something to uh, Telecomish and called up a company and it, they wanted to explain to me about this robustifier thing which is what Blue Tail did. And I, and actually, I know this stuff. I, I, I understand what you're doing. Oh, no, it's really complicated. It's okay. I was involved 20 years ago. It's okay. <laughs> um, anyway, but it left, and uh, it actually made a profit for many people. Uh, not only those of us who were there, the VCs got 28 times their money in about a year, and uh, Nortel made money, which is pretty damn amazing. Um, they didn't make money on anything else. All right. Um, okay, so that's how I started this. Okay, I was kicked out of Nortel and did this for a while. Um, but it's not really enough to keep me busy. I'm one of these workaholic people. Uh, so I started to invest uh, in startups because life is otherwise kind of ex boring. I've been with the same man since 1981. We've lived in the same house since 94. Uh, <coughs> pretty damn stable. Okay, so uh, this is the way I live in my work. Roller coaster. Really big, scary roller coasters. Constantly. So I've done a few startups. These aren't all of them, most of them. Uh, and this is what's happened to them. Um, three of them, all well, two and a half of them are listed. Toby and Ellen are listed. Uh, Midsummer will be listed the 21st of June, which is three weeks from now. So I put them in a listed section. Um, it's uh, growing. Well, there's Klarna still growing. SatCube uh, does, is growing as well. They, they just graduated from me uh, this winter. Um, grad what, what, so what I do and what we do now in the family is we choose a startup and actually work there. Around one of us three will work there around 30%, and the other two will do everything we can to help. So it turns into about a half-time job plus money into a startup. And we stay there until the company is actually stable, whatever stable means for that company. So for SatCube, uh, they went from no product, no m money, no salespeople, no contact with customers to, oh my God, um, um, we were only thinking about doing 20 of these this year, but you want 103? Oh, and I'm going, fine. Here, take one of these three production managers and, or one of their friends and go, I'm out of here, because now it's all about quality systems. Um, we've done some trade sales as well. Um, Blue Tail was a trade sale, right? Lensway was a trade sale. And three, which you probably don't know as well, Tecla, Panoptic, and Mecca were also trade sales. Uh, pretty respectable thing to do. You could do some product development that somebody else needs. Uh, three of them liquidated a bankruptcy. Right. Not so much fun. One of them, Sumline, I went in and was going to say, okay, now let's just start work. Um, by the way, you don't have a shareholders agreement. Just fix that. And the whole thing imploded. <laughs> Whoops. Okay gone. Uh, and three that uh, the three of us are working on at the moment, I'm working mostly with Racefox. It's a real-time coach, digital coach. It will tell you to that you're bouncing up and down too much as you're running, pretend you, if you are, right then. Or that your right leg seems to be stronger than your left, and here's some exercise you really ought to do. Or uh, it's time, you know what, you're in good enough shape, you could actually finish this race now. There. Uh, uh, Volumental does 3D scanning of feet, recommends shoes that'll fit. 
ECHO is machine learning for IoT, really tiny processors, Raspberry Pi and lower. Okay, so this is what I've done the last 20 years. Um, one thing I noticed, the reason we do this, this amount of effort into our companies is that um, we notice that the more I work, or the more we work, the better it goes. So if you uh, go from just being an investor, you can see that all the ones that went god-awful, I was just an investor, uh, up to the point where we were founders, then it went a little bit better, okay? Uh, and then Klarna is just extra Mickey luck, right? So from, from investor, which you can see at the bottom, over as I, as I work harder, the company, maybe I choose more carefully, and maybe it does help to, uh, to have me there, me and husband and daughter there, half time, and extra money, it's extra resources and extra money might be useful. Um, so I was gonna talk about this. The first thing, this thing here is um, classic. Sorry guys, this is, this is knowledge from way long ago. It's called uh, a Porter Five Factor Analysis. Look it up, it's on Quick MBA. Uh, I always take a look at this, right? It's the, the position, the strategic position of your company. So if you're here, is there something else gonna come in and wreck you? If you, for instance, uh, have a taxi business, it might be time to worry about Uber. If you are a calculator company, maybe you're not doing so well because of your sm smartphones have taken over. Uh, you can sometimes see these things happen before they happen. Uh, if you have only one customer, very few customers, then they negotiate hard. What do they do? They push down your prices. They say they'll buy and then they don't for a year or so in order to weaken you so that your negotiation power is lower. Or they, if they really want you, then they will at that point say, uh, uh, gee, sorry, we can't buy you, but we'll give you a job. Uh, that's what happens if you have too many of them. If you don't have, if you have, if you're doing an app and you have a running app, then there's a lot of people who run uh, 400 million or 800 million or something, that's okay. If you lose one person, it's not so bad. If you have something that works to make roads work better and there's only one customer in Sweden, well, that's bad. If that customer doesn't like you, then you're not doing well. Uh, right. Next one is competitive rivalry. How nasty are people to each other in this industry? And this varies a lot. It goes from, oh, we'd love to help out. And that's the solar cell industry in Europe, at least. Everybody wants to help each other. And down to uh, stealing each other's laptops and publishing articles uh, depending on the results that were in there. And that is basically anything med tech and life science. The doctors are supposed to be so lovely and warm-hearted and helpful, but they're not, okay? They're the worst of all in terms of competitive rivalry. So if you can avoid doing a med tech one, actually do. I, w I was doing a med tech one and uh, the gang of us went out to lunch. We locked the door. While we were there at lunch, uh, somebody broke a window, climbed in, bro turned over a vase, put the vase back up again, ignored all the purses and wallets and fancy computers rallying around, took the R&D boss's computer, climbed back out through the window, and three weeks later, uh, we know who took it because they started to publish results from our data. Um, that's bad. That was painful, honestly, it was painful. Uh, in the same way that, by, that, pr that customers can be too powerful, suppliers can be too powerful, and I think Spotify is a pretty good example of that. So Spotify is a great idea, okay? And they needed contact, they needed music. They really needed that. Without that, they didn't have anything. Who owns the music? It's the, it's the music industry company, the people who have the rights, okay? And so what did they do? They said, oh, interesting idea. First of all, we require to buy a chunk of your company. Second of all, we're going to put the price per play for the music extremely high. So you're going to make, you're going to lose money hand over fist, which Spotify has done. Okay, and then they've had to pump, had to pump in more money, which meant that they've been able to buy more and more of the company. 
right? So they basically squeezed out, although the founders are doing just fine, it's not that, but they squeezed out an awful lot. And it's not that the artists are earning money, it's that the, 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 the music industry is earning money on Spotify. It's that, so that that's the supplier power, right? And they could use it to take over the company. And then threats of substitutes. Um, Uh, what can we say? Uh, if you were doing Java threads in 1995, I think that airline was a pretty good substitute. Okay? Come in, right? Uh, right, so this is what you look at. <coughs> at least one of the things I look at. Another thing I always look at is the team, because I will be working there, or one of us will be working there. There are these people that I actually want to work with. Do I like them enough? Will I care whether their wives or husbands are, have a cold? because that is the level that I know people at, okay? They're my, they're, they're my colleagues. So I know who's, who's, you know, all that. And I want to feel that, okay, yeah, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna go through hell and high water. We're gonna be on a roller coaster together. We can trust each other. This will work out fine. It'll be painful. <laughs> it will be painful, because I know it will be painful, but it'll be, it'll be fine. We'll do it. Okay, and then you need an idea, okay? Something. Um, they're never mine. I wish they were, but they're not. My ideas are terrible. Other people's ideas are generally good. There are some of them. So uh, what happens is some people come to me nowadays and say, I've got this idea, well, you want to make it into reality with me, and I will sometimes do it, or we will sometimes do it. Okay? Uh, this is another thing that's actually interesting is these are the horizons of innovation. This is also from a really classic Harvard Business Review article about 20 to 25 years ago. Uh, horizon ones, if you have a mature business and you just want to do the same thing but better. You are a uh, consulting company and, gee, it'd be nice to be rid of all of your expense reports. Get them automated, right? So somebody's going to try to sell you a way to do expense reports easier. Uh, that is just, and if you are an expense reports automation company, then you'd go to them and try to sell it, and you'd have to fit into all of their systems, right? Or if you're an uh, airline consulting company and you decide there's a new project management tool you need, well, that's the same thing. It's the same thing you've been doing, but now better. Horizon 2, it's harder. It's here is a new product. This is what you do with a trade sale. You say, here is a fantastic new miraculous product and you ought to use it and sell it. We'll make your company bigger and better and stronger. Uh, that's what Blue Tail was for Altian and Nortel. Uh, that's you know, quite a few of what we often do is, is do, uh, say that, okay, the, comp the, the world, um, TLF did this. It's the world needs this new product in a little while, we'll make it, we'll prove that it actually works and people actually want it, and then we'll sell it to somebody who has the right branding and the right channels to, to do it. And Horizon 3 is disruptive. This is, um, oh, like Spotify, if the, if the music industry hadn't squeezed, <laughs> hadn't forced their way in, then Spotify could have hurt the music industry. Um, all right. So Horizon 1, these are the ones I've done that have been Horizon 1. You'll notice that a couple have been really terrible and, one have, and a couple have been really good. Um, the roller coaster is all about, give us a reference customer, please. They don't really want to buy from you, okay? Not particularly. But please give us a reference customer. And if you can get a reference customer early, that's something you want to look for. If you have the company you're considering joining has a really good contact with some important customer, that's actually a really good sign. Um, hmm? These are the problems you have here. Uh, often they'll have uh, payment times of around 90 days. Uh, it's hard to survive 90 days uh, without being paid. It just is. Um, Horizon 2. This is volumental. Uh, you, can do you can sell more shoes if you have the scanner in. You, get, you sell between two and eight times more pair of shoes if you have a scanner in your store. Please, please buy. Uh, Midsummer, uh, if you have, uh, if you sell our kinds of uh, solar cells, then um, you can have solar cells in places that you couldn't otherwise install them on top of stadium uh, roofs, for instance. And 
Ellen, uh, it's a probiotic tampon. Uh, use this, and you'll be able to, and you uh, a, um, will be able to sell more in your little shop, right? This, Ellen, is we. It's now it's listed now, but it really ought to be owned by something like Johnson and Johnson or Kimberly Clark or some other feminine product company, right? diapers. Um, this is what we often do. Let's see if I can get this. Okay. Right. Um, once upon a time, Joe always came up with these amazing ideas about what would be necessary in about five years. Probably still does. I don't know that, but it's, it's approximately that what you want to do. You want to say, okay, we can do this. It, it's necessary, but not just yet. It will be soon. And that kind of idea is the right kind of idea to look for here. Um, this thing, this is actually what everybody dreams of, right? Competing a, a r an actual disruptive Horizon 3 product, let's change the world. Okay, so in order to find one of those, and they're very seldom seen, uh, take Lensway, for instance. Well, wh why do I say Lensway is disruptive? Well, used to be, if you needed contact lenses, you'd make an appointment with your optician in the middle of the city. It was open 10 to 4.30, 10 months a year, because they had a pretty good life, right? In an expensive place with lots and lots of eye eyeglasses on the walls that you could try on. Um, and what happened with Lensway is that you could instead order your lenses on the net and have them delivered in your mailbox the next day, right? So instead of making an appointment, going there for your appointment, getting three lenses with you, going back and picking them up and paying for them, which is like three or four errands. You just were on the net and it worked. Uh, and it was half price or less. Uh, that It turned out to be quite popular. Lensway's now um, number one in the world in contact lenses on the net. Uh, um, and the opticians are no longer in the city centers. They are often open, normal hours, and they buy their lenses from Lensway. Because um, we can sell them, or yeah, we can sell them cheaper. Racefox, um, so that basically, you might, it it's was way too expensive and difficult to go contact lenses before, now it's easy, right? Klarna, before we came in and did um, billing uh, for, shops, for e-shops, you actually had to pay with a credit card before you got anything delivered, and that was, people were nervous about that. There wasn't PayPal, right? Uh, there wasn't Klarna, uh, and so people were really nervous. And if you wanted to get credit, then you had a 15-page in five-point type thing you printed out and signed and then got got something from Handel's Bank, and which was credit from the bank, and then you, you know, it was really painful. So basically you didn't get credit. Things weren't sold on the net with credit. Uh, and Klarna made that work, okay? So that people started to buy more on the net, around 20 to 30% more sales on the net with Klarna than without way back when. Plus you could get credit without having to print out an enormously long legal document. It was pretty simple. Uh, that meant that there was a lot more sales on the net, and it meant that, you know, they, Klarna's done quite well. Racefox, which is my current baby, uh, are people who run for exercise. Around, somewhere around 55 to 80 percent of you all, I wish I were one of them, I'm starting to be, but I'm not, I'm out of shape, uh, get hurt every year. Bad knees, uh, shin splints, uh, stretch a muscle in your thigh, um, something happens, right? Uh, plus, so you run wrong, you hurt yourselves. And so you have these ideas, like I do, like I'd really like to get into shape, that would be wonderful. And so you go out and start to run, and then you hurt yourself, and then you're in worse shape than you were before, because you have to actually lay down on the sofa for a few weeks, right? Not great. Um, so what we do is we have a, a coach in the eye, ears, 
uh, that will tell you how to, we, we understand when you're running exactly how you're running. We can tell what your strengths and weaknesses are. We can tell them you're likely to be injured soon, so stop running. Uh, we can tell that your right side's stronger than your left, and it's time to do exercises to make your left side stronger. We can do all this, and we do it in your ears uh, on a subscription with AI. Also, if people report that their right knee hurt when they're running, then we will ask again the next morning, uh, is do you, how's your knee? And if it still hurts, well, then that's a real hurt. If, you, if it hurts while you're running, uh, that happens, right? But if it hurts the next day, then you're, you're actually injured. Uh, so we can actually help people with that. And this is what we're competing with is people otherwise would be personal trainers, right? But they cost 800 pounds an hour or 600 pounds an hour. And people don't, and they're, they're not with you when you want to go running at 11 at night or whatever it is, right? Uh, so we're with you all the time. So at least when, when I'm running, I, I'll say, okay, short steps. One, my, one of my problems is I take too long steps and I ended up on my heel, which gives me shin splints. Right. Uh, so I say, okay, short steps, short steps, short, and I run along and I've got short steps at all of two or 300 meters and then I start thinking about something else and I, I start to run the way I learned how to run when I was a year and a half old. Um, and now, Ray's Fox will tell me, beep, short steps, remember, <laughs> keep your feet under you, okay? So this is competing against non-consumption. I, I didn't have a personal trainer, no way I was going to pay for it, and besides, I want to run when I want to run, so I have that along with me all the time. This is what I would say is disruptive, right? Um, so, from the startup's perspective, if you have one of these babies, and as I said, they're really very unusual. Most of the time, people telling me that they're disruptive, uh, they're not, okay? They're, they're basically horizon one. They say, we're disrupting the entire expense uh, report industry. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, it's not disruptive, right, well, the same way. But the thing is, okay, do we need something from the rest of the industry? Do we need something? Yes, if you're Spotify, they absolutely needed music. Without that, not so much Spotify. So they were forced into the situation they're in now. A lens where you could use the industry's fragmentation against them. Back then, there were a lot of different people who sold contact lenses, right? And... Uh, there was a gray market. If you bought a lot of contact lenses as a, as a chain of contact lens stores, uh, then you got cheaper prices. And so people would pretend they were growing faster than they would and end up with some extra, an extra inventory that they could just sell off. Okay. So we could use that against them. We could buy gray market lenses and compete against others. Okay. You could use the, the, there were some big players we could use this. You look confused, and I don't think I explained that very well. Okay, so Lensway, contact lenses, at least then, there were five different factories in the world that made contact lenses, not more than five. So contact lenses that were available in India were the same ones that were available in Sweden. Exactly the same, from the same factory. Okay. So we could buy Indian contact lenses and sell them in Sweden. If you were a contact lens distributor, a, a chain of opticians, then if you're only selling a little bit, then you pay a lot per contact lens, and if, you, and if you sell more, then you pay less, much less. So they had a reason to buy a lot extra lenses and then sell off, th and, then and so that their general cost per lens would go down, although they'd have a huge bulk of inventory after a while, and they would sell off the bulk of inventory to, say, Lensway. Um, so, yeah, we could do that. Um, Enterfy, it's also an interesting one. You guys know Enterfy? Right, so it's a little thingamajig that you put in your car that teaches you how to drive in an eco-friendly manner, which is actually also happens to be an awful lot safer. Okay? Uh, you get a little thing there that says it goes green or not. It's nice enough, not a big deal. But then you can say, okay, we'll put that together with car insurance companies. And the car insurance companies will then be able to charge you for, depending on the way you actually drive. 
getting a little bit more interesting. You can do it even better than that. We'll charge you depending on the way you drive that 10 kilometer bit. More interesting. So you can loan the car out to some 23 year old guy and said, you're gonna pay your own insurance. And uh, suddenly, you've got a circular economy for cars because you can loan them out to each other and the insurance is covered. You can pay, they've, they put together a payment system so the cars, you, if, you loan, if you loan out your car to me, then I pay four times the insurance, whatever it was. I, if I drove in it by 80 kilometers an hour past the school, then I'm gonna pay an awful lot for the car for you. Uh, and that just works, okay? So you've got circular economy, you've got insurance companies, uh, of all the car insurance companies, it's not, it, they're getting hurt by this, right? And people are driving better because you, it's gamified, you, the thing goes green. Uh, so what they've done is that the big insurance companies did not want to have this happen at all, by no way, no way, uh, they wanted it to happen, so they went with something called Moderna for Shacking, which is a little player who could do this. And now Moderna for Shacking is growing like Billion, and the other ones are shrinking. Disruptive. You can do white label for faster growth. Uh, Tink does this. Tink is a banking application uh, where it keeps track of what my, where you spend money, uh, and it will offer you better loans if they know more about you. Uh, so they, what they do is they do it in Sweden, they do it themselves, but they also sell the same application to Klarna, they sell the same application to ABN AMRO in the Netherlands and a bunch of other companies, uh, banks, so that they can grow much more quickly uh, by having their own consumer brand in some places and letting, other, letting the people they would otherwise kill uh, use the uh, technology. But Tink is probably destructive, okay? Uh, and race folks, I don't know if we need something from the rest of the industry. Not yet. It's not quite as obvious as Spotify. It might be channels to the customers uh, if we want to work with people who make stuff, but we don't know yet. So far, we don't know. We're young. We don't know. Uh, and the other thing is that if you have a Spotify, then you cannot prevent the other ones, the big ones, the established ones, the music industry, from investing in your company. If you're Tink, they were actually decided to let Esse Banken invest, and once Esse Banken invested, then every new bank they sign up wants a bit of the company, which doesn't scale well. <laughs> uh, but you need to think about that. Um, NFI does not let the uh, insurance companies invest. Uh, Lensway did not let the contact lens companies invest. Yeah. Interesting, because if they invest and you're hurting them, then they will hurt you, right? Um, right. Oops, other way around. Oops, this way. Okay, so this is us. Me, you know, Caroline, you can see, is our daughter. Uh, she's on her fourth startup now, I think. Yeah, fourth. Uh, techie. But she's also, her friends are not past their best before dates. Mine are. <laughs> so we, we tend to employ her friends <laughs> everywhere. Oh, Caroline, do anybody does this? <laughs> um, Plus, she's a digital native, and I'm really not. Okay, Bank spent uh, the last 30 years or something um, doing management consulting and always on pricing and revenue. Okay, and one of the big questions with with startups is what price can you take? What business models can you take? How do you actually sell this when you can otherwise give it away? Um, and since he's done hundreds of these, he's really very useful for startups. I've always brought them into my companies, but uh, or tried to, but he's been quite, I don't want to give away my consulting. He said, well, this is mine. But um, now he's actually doing it uh, for the startups. It's useful. Um, oh, back again, here we go. So that's what I was saying. He's chaired this. 
And this is why we're we doing it. Um, well, because I need more excitement in my life, I'd say. There's, w there's that. Um, there's also that we've put an awful lot of time and effort into getting skills on how to start companies, how to do this, how, uh, oh, this is the way you actually do a business-to-business -business sale, this is a go-to-market strategy, and so on. And knowing an awful lot of random people and random facts and random ways of doing stuff. Not the very best in the world for any of the things, but you know, being able to know all sorts of things is actually useful. Uh, so why not use the skills? Another thing about being middle-aged is um, it's kind of nice to care about things. I think that's probably true of everyone, every age, but it's somehow something happens at some point. We say, oh, geez, you know, I think I really want to contribute to something other than myself. Um, and so that's what we do. Um, be involved in other people's lives, be involved with other people's company, contribute. Uh, it's actually very important to me. Uh, I think we're up to a few thousand jobs. I'm not really sure how many. Um, quite a few thousand jobs that we've helped make. Um, we're spreading skills and how to start. So the people we start companies with, when we're done with it, when we say, okay, <laughs> you're through here, well, they know how to start a company because they've done it now, right? Plus, if they have to sell the company, well, then they have money and they can do it again. And basically, almost everybody I've started a company with has started another one, at least one, often more. Um, and that means that there's a lot of jobs in Sweden, right? And not only in Sweden, but, but mostly in Sweden, some in Switzerland as well. Um, and so we're getting a startup community. Uh, and I think that the airline community has been extremely strong in the startup community in Sweden and in other places, in California and the UK and a lot of places. But it's also uh, the startup community in Sweden. If you have a bunch of people, this, I tend to, we tend to go for really very techy companies. You'll notice there's no download this and, and, and I don't know, buy fancier clothes, I don't know. Uh, and we've been getting people like you, honestly, to have enough money and enough knowledge, enough skills, so you can start your own company next time around, and that you will, and that's kind of important, because otherwise you end up with all the assholes with all the money. And there are an awful lot of assholes out there. Uh, commercial people will generally exploit techie people. I'm sure you know this by now, but it's pretty painful and you can avoid it. If possible, you need to avoid it. Uh, but this is some way we can, uh, this is what we do, is we try to do that. Okay. Um, and this is all I was going to say. And <laughs>